After 42 years of dictatorial rule, Libya's former leader, Muammar Gaddafi, was killed on Thursday after the National Transitional Council fighters captured his hometown of Sirte, which was also his last crucial stronghold two months after his regime was brought down. Qaddafi, who was 69, is the first leader to have been killed from the nations of the Arab Spring, a regional uprising which has seen people from Tunisia, Egypt, Syria and Yemen rise up and demand an end to their decades-long rule. Born in 1942 to nomadic parents, Qaddafi dropped out of Benghazi University to join the army. He made his first politically significant stance in September 1969 as the leader of junior army officers that saw the overthrowing of King Idris in a military coup. Idris was ruler of Libya since it gained independence from Italy in 1951. Drawing upon Arab nationalism, Gaddafi decided to cut ties with Western powers in favor of unifying Arab nations. However, his attempts, like the initiation of the Arab Federation with Egypt and Syria in April 1972, proved unsuccessful. He also organized opposition against the 1978 Camp David peace agreement between Egypt and Israel. His relationship with the West continued to dwindle into the early 1980s, especially with the United States. He was accused of sending agents to bomb a club in Berlin, popular amongst American Marines, which consequentially resulted in U.S. airstrikes aimed at Benghazi and Tripoli. His home in Aziziya was struck, and his adopted daughter was allegedly killed. In December 1988, Gaddafi and his regime were blamed for a Pan Am flight explosion over the Scottish village of Lockerbie. Gaddafi faced a great deal of international pressure to hand over two Libyans accused of their involvement in the incident, and despite great resistance, he ultimately did so on the advice of the South African president, Nelson Mandela. But this incident would prove to be instrumental in Gaddafi being seen as a pariah. Gaddafi openly criticized Arab leaders and institutions and was erratic with his decisions regarding foreign policy. One example was in 2003 when he declared Tripoli had abandoned weapons of mass destruction programs and UN nuclear site checks. This event would signal the end of his country's isolation and the resumption of diplomatic ties with the West. I'm very much looking forward. In April 2009, Gaddafi's fourth eldest son, Mu'tasim, met with U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, acting as Libya's national security advisor, which indicated the possibility that Gaddafi was planning to hand over power to him. In the same month, Gaddafi visited the U.S. for the first time since he was in power and addressed the U.N. General Assembly, accusing global powers of betraying the U.N. Charter and denouncing the veto powers. The infamous speech lasted over an hour and a half. When the Arab Spring commenced in Tunisia early 2011, Libyans saw the regional wave of uprisings as a pivotal moment to call for the end of Gaddafi's four-decade rule, which marked the beginning of violent crackdowns across the nation. The UN Security Council responded on March 17th by issuing a no-fly zone, and two days later, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization began its deployment of air raids in Libya to support the civilian plight. Gaddafi remained defiant in the months to come, with casualties rapidly increasing, prompting fears of a civil war. There has been repeated speculation that Gaddafi was a casualty of the airstrikes, but his sporadic television appearances would prove otherwise. His last public appearance was on June 12th, which showed him playing chess against Kirsan Ilyumjinov, president of the World Chess Federation. On August 21st, rebels managed to seize Gaddafi's Aziziya compound, which showed minimal resistance. Libya's interim government, the National Transitional Council, offered a reward for his capture, as he was also wanted by Hague's International Criminal Court for crimes against humanity. <laughs> For the past two months, Libya's interim fighters were on the hunt for Gaddafi and his inner circle. Fighting was intense in his hometown of Sirte, but ultimately the fighters succeeded in capturing the most wanted man in Libya. True to his word, Gaddafi vowed to die on Libyan soil, which he ultimately did on October 20th. Noura Faraj, Al Arabiya.